science. It bestows immortality on those who advance it to elevate all of mankind. Hmm. Newton, Einstein, Sagan, princes among men. But the price for such a legacy is steep indeed. In Night Springs. Springs. <laughs> all right. Well, this place. Oh, we'll take a break. Tonight's episode: A Quantum Suicide. If our lives are already written, it would take a courageous man to change the script. Having called a press conference, Dr. Barclay Colvin is about to demonstrate that very courage. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I am Dr. Barclay Colvin, and I'm glad so many of you could join me here at the Moorcock Institute. Tonight, I'm going to give a practical demonstration of the many worlds interpretation. As you can see, this is a loaded nine millimeter pistol. It shall be part of a thought experiment. And okay. now, a real experiment, known as a quantum suicide. Did he say suicide? Is that a real gun? He's kidding, right? Uh, please, please, stay calm. There is no risk. Observe what occurs when I place the weapon against my own forehead. Now, you might think this round is merely a dud. Not so. Observe the flower pot. And yet, I myself cannot be harmed with this gun. With each pull of the trigger, two new realities branch off. One in which the weapon didn't fire, and one where it did. With my machine here, I have ensured that this reality is always the former. I have bestowed upon myself quantum immortality. Under no circumstances can this gun kill me. So wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is that every time you pull the trigger, in another reality, you die? Yes, yes, of course, but that's completely trivial. There's an infinite number of things that could happen at any moment, and they always do happen somewhere. The point is, this one thing did not happen here. You're insane, Colvin. Insane? Insane? Hey, was this thing supposed to be plugged in? I stumbled uh -huh. on it. You fools! Gaze upon quantum immortality! <laughs> oh, poor Dr. Colvin. Filled by his own hubris or the ignorance of the masses. Perhaps he should have left the crate unopened, the decaying atom unobserved. Curiosity often kills the cat in Night Springs. Night Springs. All right, anyway. Let's get things going on, shall we? Interesting. Thank you. Uh, this is gonna get bad. Pretty quick. Okay. Got 
Get off me. vanished, leaving behind only a lifetime of nightmares to come. Assuming I'd reached the lights of the gas station alive. Probably not. I hate those swinging things scaring the shit out of me. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go get to this box, open the goddamn gate. Quit panting like you're tired. Open the damn thing, you douche. Goddamn hell. I recognized the parade float I had seen in Bright Falls when okay. I first arrived with Alice. Alright, fence there, so I gotta go around. After the insanity I had just experienced in the darkness, the lights of the gas station felt comforting, at least for a moment. The same world reasserted itself. Yeah, just a little bit. That's an old Ford truck. There we go. Page. The Deer Fest had been two weeks away when we arrived. If the day count on the banner was right, I was missing a whole week between the night we got here and now. Holy shit. That's, uh, that's pretty fucked up. How the hell do you miss a whole week? I'm actually trying to look for the, uh, price of gas. That's my big problem. Coffee soda. Can't get in. I had to get inside the gas station to find a phone to call for help. The garage was a mess. It looked like someone had trashed the place, or that there'd been some kind of fight. Yeah, kinda. Oh. All right. I'll keep writing. Outside, there's only darkness. Outside the cabin. Outside the story, there's only darkness. I can feel her presence in the dark. Just now, I could smell her perfume in the room. I'll reach her, I'll fix it up. I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. I don't believe this. 